Ladies and gentlemen, come gather round, come gather round, come gather around. Whoa! Today, we're gonna fix that craving you have of running steelies, but you can only get a 15 by 6, and what you really want is a 15 by 7. But nobody makes a 15 by 7. So, with a few handy tools that we probably don't have, we're gonna turn a 6 into a 7. Let's go! So I have this ingenious idea. I take one of my angle grinders, put some kind of a flat, crazy apparatus on it, stick this on something like, I don't know, a bowl, or lumber, or whatever, clamp this down to the table, and then I could just turn the wheel and slice through this whole thing all the way around. How cool is that? And I spent hours coming up with this, picturing how it's all gonna work, and then I went, I'm so stupid. What I did was this. So I'm using this old brake lathe. Took the cutter head thingy off and I made this out of a trailer receiver leftover cutoff that I had. Piece of crazy bent angle iron that came with the packaging for my hoist when it was delivered. Used one of my angle grinders of which I have many. And then if this can do a brake rotor and hold it by the center and get it true, why can't it hold a wheel? This should work, I think. Let's give it a go. So these particular centers are welded in here. MIG welded in right there. So what I want to do is cut, and I aimed for kind of just this little semicircle recess in there so that I miss that weld all together and I can keep the back half and the center welded. I'm just going to slice through it and cut off the outer edge. On this particular wheel, four and five eighths will do it. And that's pretty much where I'm at. Bizarre how not really true these are. You want to go until you see rust show up in the crack. That means you've broken through because no paint ever really gets in there. So it just tends to rust. So this we should be able to smack off with a hammer. So I'm going to cut this thing right down to the bottom and make sure there's no little uh, bit of feathery edge on there. We'll clean it up so it's ready for the welding part, which will come in a bit. You want to get these edges nice and clean. This works pretty good. So this is how much I'm going to widen it. I had these cut at metal supermarkets an inch and a sixteenth. The sixteenth should take care of the kerf and make up for what I lost in uh, making the cut. So an inch and a sixteenth and we're going to bend these in the slip rollers um, into pretty close to the same diameter as the drop center of the wheel. Not my favorite tool. It would be nice if this is bolted to the floor. So I like to put this seam on the opposite side of the existing seam. Wheels are made out of flat, rolled into shape and welded together. Uh, and that's where the weld is. You can see it if you look for it. So if I put this in here like so, I'm going to make sure the weld is on the opposite side. Oh, hell. Well, I might just go right ahead and weld that in, just for giggles. 
because why not? There's the original seam. I want to match them. I don't know why, I just do. Should be somewhere around here. There it is. All I'm going to do now is just weld the top one. I'm leaving this one unwelded because I want this to help this one find its shape when this is heated up. Because stuff's going to move. <clears throat> oh, that's cool. And we'll let that cool so everything can relax and be happy. And then we'll come back, check the fit, tack, and then weld this side. And we'll straighten whatever it turns into. <laughs> hey, future me interrupting. 
now that I've done four wheels, uh, looking back, there's things I would do differently. One is I was cheap and decided I was going to widen these wheels. The easy button would be like take eight wheels, slice uh, the wheel you want to keep further to the outside and throw away the outer lip, slice the outer lip with the width you want to add off of the other wheels and just weld the two halves together. So you're taking eight wheels to make four wheels with one weld. Which works if what you can get out of those rims is the width you want, which would have worked good here. If you're going from like a five inch to a 10 inch rim, that's not gonna work. In this case, part of it is can I do this? Yes, I can. Is it the easy way? Not necessarily. The second thing I would do is, while it made sense to me to weld the hoop to the lip and then try to get this on here, there's compounding errors and it's difficult to get this perfectly true. They're not tremendously awesome to begin with. So if I were to do this again, and next version of me should be listening to myself when I do this, I would probably do, take my little grinder holder epinator thing, and touch it to the rim here, zero the dial on the brake lathe, and then I can pull this out, scooch over to the other side, and make sure it's zeroed over there. Of course, that depends on whether this brake lathe can actually reach that far, because you don't usually have drums that are that wide. So I may have to give that another think. Nevertheless, here we are. Carry on! All right, I went and sandblasted one of the wheels. This thing's cooled down. We're gonna pop this off and clean the inside edge up and uh, make sure I got some good penetration. Not bad, couple missed spots. Couple missed spots. So I pretted up the inside because, well, you can't get to it once it's assembled. I guess this is the outside, but it's the inside. The insides here, I'm not going to change these welds, I'm just going to keep them the way they are. Um, partly, I guess, so if anybody ever takes these wheels in somewhere, they're going to go, hey, these are widened. And this stuff isn't street legal. Once had a new VP come through the school, they were taking the tour, I was doing something in the, it was in the summertime, I was doing something in the shop, and uh, <clears throat> to introduce what I was doing and sharing and talking about some of the vehicles that we had in the shop and some of the things we'd done to it, turned out one of those, the, the new VPs, actually was a former RCMP officer, and he looked kind of worried, and he said, are these street legal? And I laughed, I said, Nothing we do here is street legal, because these are vehicles that don't leave the shop. These are what you do for your race wheels. Don't do these for your street wheels. Eh? Eh? Okay, carry it on. Let's put it together and see how it fits. Where is that seam? That seems to be here. <laughs> Where'd the other one go? Should go together like this. All right, let's let's give it a test spin, shall we? It's not too bad. That's pretty good. Let's weld them up.
I'll put the total time to do one wheel right here so you can see how long it took me to do this. And a smart person would say, why, Walwood? Why would you do this when you can buy a set of used mags that look kind of cool? Because I'm stupid is my moniker. So um, I want steel wheels, but I want seven inches wide. I don't know. Ta-da! So then begs the question, do they look good on the car? Well, after a thorough sandblasting to get all the crappy original paint off and get it nice and clean, uh, two coats of epoxy primer, um, Dell Fleet gloss black in the center, and a softer sparkly silver on the outside, I think it looks pretty awesome. Pretty sexy. If you can make this car actually look kind of sexy. But it brings the rim right out to the edge of the fender, which looks sweet. Thanks for watching.